Uh, good evening, <laughs> uh, and welcome to the City of Lathrop Village City Council meeting um, today, Monday, January 25th, 2021. Um, Madam Clerk, if we can take roll call, please. And please remember that you have to give your location of where you are. Roll call, Mayor Garrett. Uh, here, and I am in Oakland County, Lathrop Village, Michigan. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Here in Harbor Springs, Michigan, Emmett County. Council Member Ferguson. Present, Oakland County, Lathrop Village. Council Member Siddiqui. Here, Lathrop Village, Oakland County, Michigan. Council Member Stallings. Madam Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. I invite everyone to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and to and the to Republic, Republic for which, which it stands. stands. One nation, One nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, before we go to the approval of agenda, would anyone like to make a motion to? Uh, I'll make a motion to excuse Councilwoman Stallings. Second. It's been moved and second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Roll call, Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Councilmember Ferguson. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui? Yes. And Mayor Garrett? Yes. Motion carried to excuse Council Member Stallings from this meeting tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and now we'll go to the approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. It's been moved and second. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Roll call. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Council Member Siddiqui? Yes. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. And Mayor Garrett? Yes. Agenda approved. Thank you. And it's a great pleasure to have a presentation from Dr. Nat Pernick, the Voters Challenge, and the recipient being the Children's Garden, uh, Dr. Pernick. Oh, you're, you're on mute, Dr. Pernick. about now? Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> well, th thank you very much for having me. So I mailed a check and I don't know if you've gotten it yet. It has been a check. Um, it's in the mail. <laughs> it's in the mail. Well, it's from my bank for $500 to the uh, Children's Village. So what I've done, this is the second election I've done this as a way of encouraging people in uh, my, I live in Huntington Woods, but in our next door community, we have eight communities, including Lathrop Village, so we had a challenge to see who would have the highest voter turnout. And um, they threw, actually there was, it was very close between second, third and fourth. Second was actually Pleasant Ridge at 80.9% and Lathrop Village was fourth at 80.45%, but uh, which is a big improvement. It's 3% from uh, where you were four years ago. And um, so the cash prize is $500. And I had asked all the communities to pick a charity as a way of getting people a little more excited about it. So I'm happy to have sent the check to you uh, on behalf of, of your charity and uh, great job. So congratulations. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you for doing that. We do appreciate it. <clears throat> um, and then we need to adjourn as city council. And I know I should know this, but we don't have enough ZBAs, but we need to uh, adjourn as the council and then re- um, adjourn as a ZBA, right? Great, okay. So I uh, have a motion for adjournment as the city council. Make a motion for adjournment as city council. Second. Second. It's been moved and second. Uh, do we need to have a roll call vote on that for adjournment? Please. Yeah. Okay. Roll call, please. Council member Siddiqui. Yes. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Motion carried to go into the ZBA meeting. Thank you. Um, I'll call to order the Zoning Board of Appeals. Roll call again, or we're good? It's always a roll call. <laughs> 
Mr. Case, I'm going to roll for sake of the minutes and sake of doing everything. So this, this will be your roll call for your ZBA board. Council Member Ferguson? Yes, President. Mr. Garrett? Oh, I'm sorry, you have to announce where. Oh, okay. sorry. Uh, present, Oakland County, Lathrop Village. Mayor Garrett? Present, Oakland County, Lathrop Village. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Here, uh, Harbor Springs, Michigan, uh, Emmett County. And Council Member Siddiqui? Hey. Here in Lathrop Village, Michigan, Oakland County. Madam Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, and I'm just going by what is on my agenda because I don't see any other um, uh, the agenda or the previous, sorry. There's nothing from the previous hearing to uh, approve. So going right into the public hearing for 27215 Southville Road, Lather Village, uh, appeal number 71221. And I will um, hand that over to you, Dr. Cheryl. Sorry, Madam Mayor. I'm going to Jill and Susan. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm what sorry. Were... Never mind. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Cheryl. I don't know if Jill wants or Susie wants to give an overview um, and then opening up for any public comments for the public hearing? Um, I believe that this item was tabled or postponed, asked to be postponed at the applicant's request. And so um, I think that maybe just a motion to postpone um, and say that you, I think could open the public hearing, Scott. We did, well, we did, yeah, we did publish it and for tonight's public hearing date. So if any, if any members of the public are present and wish to speak, mm -hmm. uh, we can accept their comments now, but um, we will we will take a, a motion after to postpone or continue the public hearing until a date certain, uh, and that'll be at the applicant's request. Public hearing is open. Is there anyone that is asking to speak? Well, if, before you do that, if you want to give a little, uh, just a brief overview of it, that way, um, if any any of the members of the public so are watching and want to comment on it. Sure, um, the applicant received site plan um, approval for some improvements to the property. And uh, one of the conditions of approval was the installation of the masonry screen wall that's required by the city's ordinance. Um, that wall would be located on the property line um, of the alley and the adjacent homeowner to the west. And um, there are some configurations with that uh, property line where the applicant um, and the property owners, I understand it, um, are seeking a waiver of the wall requirement in lieu of um, some screening, landscape screening, vegetative um, in nature. Um, and so that would be, can I, <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on, Cheryl, you need to make her a co-host. I can make you the whole host if you want. Okay, um, sorry about that. Um, and so the request is uh, because there is um, no other provision for the planning commission to make that waiver, the request is to the ZBA um, to waive the requirement of the screen wall. And I can answer any other questions that you might have on that. Heard during the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to be heard during the public hearing? There, there's no questions or hand raised. Okay, hearing that there's not anyone asking to be heard during the public hearing, I will close the public hearing. And um, next will be the motion to postpone Zoning Board of Appeals public hearing and meeting until February 22nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. I have a motion. I'll make a motion to postpone the Zoning Board of Appeals public hearing uh, and meeting until February 22nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. Second. It's been moved and second. Um, is there any discussion? 
Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call, Mayor Garrett. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. And Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Motion carried to postpone this meeting until February 22nd. It will be continued. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, now I will um, take a motion to adjourn the Zoning Board of Appeals and reconvene as a council meeting. Make a motion to adjourn the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting and reconvene as a council meeting. Second. Second. Um, I don't know if we have any discussion. Don't think so. Roll call, please. Roll call, Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Mayor Garrett. Yes. Motion carried to go back into the city council meeting. Thank you. Can we just go right into um, the consent agenda, Scott, or do we have to call to order again? You can you can call the order, but you don't have to go through the whole roll call announcing since we already did that part. Okay, so I'm calling to order the uh, city council meeting of January 25th, 2021, where we will continue at the consent agenda. The consent agenda will consist of the approval of minutes uh, from the study se session December 21st, 2020. The approval of minutes from the council meeting December 21st, 2020, and the approval of minutes from the special meeting January 4th, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda minus the, well, I'll make a motion to approve the, uh, make a motion to approve the consent agenda for the uh, council minutes on December 21st, 2020, and the uh, minutes on the special meeting on January 4th of 2021, and I'm leaving out the study session on December 21st as I have some comments about that. Okay. Second. It's been moved and second. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, uh, roll call, please. Roll call, Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Mayor Garrett. Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Motion carried. Um, so here's my question because uh, I cannot <laughs> act a brand new to this. When do you have your discussion? Actually, it was supposed to be before. Should have been before the vote. Yeah, that's what I thought. No, I my mo my motion was just for the other two, not for the yeah. one. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm but opening it up for you to. Uh, yep. If you want. Okay, so page page 22 on uh, of the, the packet uh, for the study session minutes for December 21st, 2020, item number C. Um, normally I do have this written out on a printout, but I don't have a printout tonight, so I'm going online, so let me find it. Uh, yeah, so about five or six lines down, it says estimate to replace all meters in the city is higher than what was budgeted. That needs to be changed. the The estimate to replace all meters in the city is higher than what we what we now actually think it will cost. That was that was what was said in that meeting there. So uh, we we made an estimate for I think eight hundred and sixty thousand um, dollars, but we now think it's going to cost less than that. Um, so I don't think the wording in there uh, captured that correctly. Madam so Clark, Scott, Scott, I can now make a motion to approve that with the with the corrections. Unless there's any additional comment or, or corrections to be made, then yeah. But, yeah. Is there any further comments, questions regarding that? Okay, go ahead, Bruce. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, City Council study session meeting on December twenty first, twenty twenty, with the with the with the aforementioned corrections. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any additional uh, discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call, Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Mayor Garrett. <clears throat> yes. Council Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. And Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Motion carried.
Next, we'll have the consideration for approval of monthly dis uh, disbursement reports for the month of December 2020 and quarterly investment report period ending December 31st, 2020. Oh, I'm sorry, and the December disbursements with salary included general fund at $331,161.01, major rolls $14,290.14, local rolls $40,592.14, capital fund $560, DDA, Downtown Development Authority $15,967.77, water and sewage $210,113.89, which total disbursements came up to be $612,684.95. I'll make a motion to approve the monthly distribution report uh, with the total disbursement amount of $612,684.95 for the month of December 2020, as well, along with the quarterly investment report with the period ending uh, December 31st, 2020. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call, Mayor Garrett. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui. Chairman. Yes. And Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next, we'll have the consideration and acceptance of department reports. I'll make a motion for the acceptance of the department reports. Second. Moved and second. Is there any discussion? Mayor Garrett, I believe you indicated you had a question for the chief, and I do want to point out that their annual report is included in the um, department report. So the chief really appreciates you reminding me of what I had a question about. Um, it was, oh, I wish I had printed this out. I apologize. I should have had it up. But it was regarding the training that, there it is. When it came to the training, that is going to be on page 74. So, so Scott, if Scott didn't have such a long bill, I'd be able to get to it. <laughs> She's going to wonder why that is. <laughs> you said 74, Kelly? Page 74, yep. Yeah, thanks. Tell me when you all have gotten into it. It's really simple. It's underneath here out of all of the, I might have answered my own question. Wait a minute. So out of all of the training, are the, you're saying these are the trainings that's happened or are these are the amount of people that have gone through the training? That makes sense. So yeah, so there's a there's a list of training, and those were the number of people that have actually gone. We we've been very limited in in 2020 with COVID, um, and I would say 95 percent of all of our training that we've had scheduled has been canceled. Okay, and they haven't done any online um, training or anything like that. Uh, the the you know the stuff that we've got, some of it has been online, some of it has been in person, but. Um, no, I guess say 95% of all of the training has been uh, canceled. So, and the reason why I brought this up is because I saw the managing mental health crisis. I was on um, Congresswoman Lawrence's call this morning, and that was brought up that we, needing, we need to have more of our police officers trained for um, mental health crises, uh, crises, crises. And, um, when I saw this, that's what that just kind of uh, made me wonder that you're what they're saying is only two people out of our police force has been trained for that, and I just wanted to have clarity. So I thank you. Well, that would only be this year. Last, you know, we because a lot of this training is for the mental health um, is a week long. So last year we actually had more people uh, planned on going. We had a, a first half of the year somebody we had two or three people who were going to go, and then the last half of the year we we're going to send two or three people. Because um, we're trying to actually get all of our officers full time and part time, uh, you know, trained and certified. So, uh, you know, last year we had a few people go uh, and this year we were expected to do more. But uh, again, with COVID, everything was canceled. 
Well, I appreciate the clarification. Thank you. No problem. That's all that I have for a question. Thank you, Dr. Cheryl, for uh, reminding me. The chief thanks you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Uh, roll call, please, for the departmental reports. Department reports. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Mayor Garrett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, next we have the public comments for items on the agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes, please. Do we have anyone that wants to speak or has turned in a uh, survey monkey to request to speak? No, no hands raised. Okay, well, hearing none, um, I'll ask again, is there anyone that wants to do public comment? Okay, hearing none, I'll close the public comment. Uh, we have no public, oh. Yes, we do have a public hearing, a special assessment public hearings. So this is the um, public hearing, the sec, um, we call it resolution number two, and that's relative to the delinquent, delinquent and other bills such as unpaid grass, weed mowing charges, delinquent water bills and sewer disposal charges, sidewalk repair or nuisance abatement. Um, the list, the role is included in your packet and the information begins on page 124 of your agenda packet. And you are um, opening up the public hearing. Thank you. Does anyone want to speak at this public hearing? No one, Kelda? No, no, no one. Okay. Well, I will close the public hearing and we will go right into our action requests. First up for consideration for approval is to adopt the special assessment resolution number two. I'll, I'll make a motion to adopt the uh, attached resolution number two for special assessments, roll number 2020-01. Second. It's moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call, Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Mayor Garrett. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, next up is the um, fiscal year 2020, 20, excuse me, 2020-21 budget amendment. Mayor and Council, this is your mid-year budget amendment um, for um, items relative to the end of December, and it's for the current fiscal year, and that starts on page 131. Um, some of the major items are highlighted with a note on the side to provide a brief explanation. Thank you. Anybody would like to make a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the budget amendments as submitted by the city administrator for fiscal year 2021 for, for the, the fiscal year 2021 budget. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call, council member Ferguson. Yes. Mayor Garrett. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council member Siddiqui. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next up is a resolution adopted policy relative to the review and granting of poverty exemptions by the City of Lathrop Village Board of Review. And this begins on page 144 of your packet. There was a new public act um, adopted in Michigan, Public Act 253 of 2020 that allows for an extension of the poverty exemption for up to three years. So essentially anyone who filed for the poverty exemption in 2019 and 2020, they can have it extended up to three years. 
And then anyone who's going to file in 21, 22, and 23 are also eligible for having their poverty ex exemption extended for up to three years. They are required to file one of the forms annually to basically attest that they have not moved or had a, a change in their income status. The other part that is included in your res and all communities that um, are going to allow this have to adopt a resolution by I think it was February 15th. And the state just sent this out to us last week. So thank you, state. And the, um, we also are changing the guideline to remove the calculations that are associated with calculating the poverty exemption. Before it was kind of complicated and difficult to explain and even difficult for our board of review members to understand. So now it'll be a straightforward 50% um, reduction in the taxable value that's in place at that time. So what you have is the resolution um, that would have you adopt this policy. Thank you. Um, one thing I did want to point out, because um, Pam Scott and I were working on this over the weekend, and on this page 146, towards the bottom of the page, kind of, there's um, some language in bold for form 5739 is submitted annually. And I added that, and I just want to make sure Scott was okay with it. Yeah, I think um, because as as Cheryl indicated, there's a there's initial initial application form, and then there's an affirmation that annually they have to fill out. So it's pretty complicated uh, and tough to follow, but hopefully our board of review can walk um, individuals that do apply and uh, walk them through that process. And Pam, I don't know how, how many do we typically get? Do you, do you know annually? We have about six. Yeah, so hopefully it's, it's not too many people that we can, um, you know, work with them to make sure that all, all the forms are filled out so that nobody misses out on, on that opportunity. Thank you. I'm, I'll make a motion uh, to adopt the attached policy and resolution relative to the review and granting of poverty exemptions by the city of Lathrop Village Board of Review. Second. It's been moved to second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Council Member Siddiqui? Yes. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next up, we have a motion to approve independent contractor agreement for special event services. This begins on page 153 of your packet. And if you recall, we um, decided to split the um, services that are basically provided by Cliff from the um, custodial services for the building and then those services related to special events. So you already approved last year the um, the initial contract and this one is specific to the special event services. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the independent contract agreement for special event services with Clifton Grant. Second. It's been moved and second. Uh, is there any discussion? So this is also with Cliff, right? So we just split up the services into different categories. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Did you say no on that? You broke up. Yes, we just divided it into two separate contracts. Oh, okay. All right, thanks. I lost communication for a while there. Any other questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call, Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Mayor Garrett. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, next up is a motion to approve ordinance amending the Lather Village Zoning Ordinance, R1 District, parking and special. This starts on page 161 of your packet, and essentially it's um, a zoning amendment for the parking in the R1 district, um, the goal being to um, encourage quality redevelopment and pedestrian-oriented commercial corridors um, consistent with our master plan. 
we have um, GLR planner here as well as Susie. Um, they can go into more detail with it. It was already approved um, and recommended to the council by the planning commission. add in a couple of things if that's helpful um, just to remind you that I think we talked about this at the last joint meeting that we had of the DDA and Planning Commission and City Council that was in November maybe Susie? November 30th thank yeah. you um, so it should be somewhat um, fresh in your minds hopefully it's something that we've been talking about for a while uh, the Planning Commission did hold the public hearing on December Ooh, 15th, 15th and uh, had no comments from the public at that time. Mm. And I can answer any other questions that you have. We've, we did talk about it once before, but well, we've talked about it several times before, actually. Um. Is there a motion? I will make a motion. <laughs> I'll make I was a motion. Going for Sorry. All of, I was going for all of them tonight. <laughs> I, will make, <laughs> I will make a motion to uh, approve ordinance amending the Lather Village zoning ordinance relative to the R1 district amending section 3.1.2 of the zoning code to allow parking as a special land use and section four of the zoning code by adding section 4.16 to add standards for parking. I'll second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Council Member Siddiqui? Yes. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next up is a motion to approve staff reorganization. And I'm going to assume that that would be Dr. Carroll. Okay, so to give you an overview, um, back when we were having the budget discussions, it was suggested that I look for um, hiring a, an assistant city administrator. And um, <clears throat> with last year being not ideal, um, it seemed to make more sense to not hire on a new person, but to redistribute some of the responsibilities and roles with our existing staff. Also, it provides um, our existing staff with a, a, a growth opportunity and a cost savings. So what I am requesting is a reorganization in which the, um, the manager of community and economic development would then become the director of community and economic development. Um, some of the um, the work that they would be taking on in terms of the major changes is the project management for the capital improvement program that we're about to we're already um, embarking upon with hopefully the approval of the bonds and the special assessments associated with some of those um, projects as well as administering any of the cannabis ordinances and licenses if they are approved. Um, the DDA is, has agreed to pay 90% of for that position with the city paying 10%. So the impact on the city's budget for this current fiscal year would be approximately 2,700 plus the cost of the fringe benefits. And the second position um, would be um, transitioning the DDA slash parks and recreation specialist position, which is part-time into a full-time position where, where they would be the DDA manager still reporting to the DDA directors and also taking on special projects. And um, the DDA agreed to pay 90% of that position and 10% um, would be the responsibility of the city. The budget um, impact for this current fiscal year for that position would be $1,260 plus the fringe benefit, our portion of this fringe benefit costs. And the third one, it would be transitioning the coordinator of parks and recreation into the director of parks and recreation. And the major changes being um, they would also be responsible for the safety um, director and facility director um, roles. The safety director is actually required uh, according to the um, MIOSHA and Oakland and State of Michigan Health in regards to our COVID response plan. 
and essentially they've been doing most of these um, responsibilities since March of last year and accumulated, I think it was about 300 hours, um, yes, 300 hours um, since March re relative to the COVID implementation. So that is my request. The details and job descriptions are included in your packet. And all of this begins on page 169. I'll make, I'll make a motion to uh, uh, approve the staff reorganization as presented, creating the job titles of Director of Community and Economic Development, DDA, uh, and Special Projects Manager, uh, well, I said DDA and Special Project Manager, and, and Director of Parks and Recreation, and authorize the, the budget amendments to reflect the new salaries, fringe benefit costs, cost sharing with the DDA, uh, and that it go effective February 1st, 2021. Second. Moved in a second. Is there any discussion? I just want to mention that Dan Sook, um, the chair of the DDA board, is also present in case you had any questions for him as well. Yeah, I think it's a great solution, Cheryl. A good way to reorganize, give everybody an opportunity and, and, and satisfy a, a need, which is making you work less. Um, and, and, and Dan, we appreciate the, uh, the help there um, from the DDA. Yeah, our pleasure and, and certainly our hope is that we will continue to move along any enhancements to the city and the downtown development authority, maybe even at a quicker pace. So, so this results in a, an annual increase to the city of about like eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars Is that right? In terms of salary and cost? For the total Yes, about, yes. It's on page 170, right? That's kind of the summary. Yes. Well, yes. The columns on the annual change, that's the approximate number for the salaries plus the fringe benefit cost. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And asking for this to be effective on February 1st. Any other questions? Yo, did you say this was a cost savings? in the beginning when you were explaining it? It's a cost savings and a cost savings in that we don't have to hire someone for 60 to 80,000 plus benefits. I see. Okay, thank you. So instead of hiring an assistant city manager, um, oh. it's kind of like divvy, divvying up uh, some of the work this way. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Roll call, Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Mayor Garrett. Mayor Garrett. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to go through this. Okay, the next one be the motion to approve the Laker Village Downtown Development Cost Share Agreement 2021 to 2026. I think that would be, did I skip something? No? Yeah. Um, DDA special project? Well, no, sorry. No, you didn't. Sorry, that's me. Susie, would you like to uh, introduce this? Yes, I can talk to you guys about this. So um, we discussed, we began discussions on how to best um, kind of share, share, share the load and ensure that, um, you know, we have formalized the, the financial arrangements that we've, we've already kind of had in place um, between the DDA and the city. And so the executive committee met of the DDA uh, met two or three times um, in the fall virtually to discuss um, where some of our options were um, to, to most effectively cost share um, as, in, as it relates to both the city's needs and the DDA's uh, development plan. 
And so what you have before you today um, is the product of, of those conversations. Uh, you know, I think it, I think it's a, I think it's pretty solid, um, you know, and it really, really spreads it out and allows us to, to make some good things happen, both for the city and the DDA. And I'm available to answer your questions. I'll uh, make a motion to approve the attached Lathrop Village uh, DDA cost sharing agreement for 2021 to 2026 and authorize the mayor and city administrator to sign on behalf of the city. Second. The move to second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, uh, not to sound like a broken record, but uh, Dan, this is great. Uh, Can I what? It's, uh, I think these things are really going to help the city out. Uh, Salim, you got to mute. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so I think uh, I think these things will will really uh, help the city out in, in a variety of ways. I think it's great. Yeah, thanks. Our pleasure. Thanks, Dan. Um, any other discussion? Questions? Hearing none. Roll call, please. Or roll call, Mayor. Say something. I thought you were about to say something. Sorry. Go ahead. No, Mayor Garrett. Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Cantor. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. And Council Member Ferguson. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next, we will seek the approval or motion to approve the DDA bylaw amendments, changing the DDA board membership from 10 to 9. Susie, I think you're up again. Yep. Um, yeah, you get to talk to me for a few minutes now. Um, so we actually had our plans, the DDA's plans for uh, 2020 were a little bit different at the beginning of the year um, last year. And so we'd actually already begun talking about making some amendments to the bylaws in including the, um, the changes to the number of board members. Um, we struggled mightily in 2019 um, to get a quorum consistently. And so reducing the number, for, we're currently 10 members, the mayor plus nine, um, even reducing it by one. Um, so we have an odd number, um, will make it significantly easier to get that quorum and break those ties in the event that that ever happens. Um, so the DDA, did um, they did vote on some bylaw amendments at their at their meeting last week or two weeks ago and um, in mostly updates to the language to incorporate um, the verbiage from public act 57 of 2018 um, but they uh, they've asked for council to consider reducing the number of board seats and that is that's not something the DDA board can do. That's the city council's um, purview. So that is their request. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the amendments to the DDA uh, authority bylaws. Um, city clerk is requested to certify the approval and refer the bylaw amendments to the directors of the Lathrop Village Downtown Development Authority for their adoption. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call, Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Council Member Ferguson. Yes. And Mayor Garrett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next up is a motion to appoint members to the Downtown Development Authority, the DDA. Wow, another one, Susie. I know, I told you, you get to keep talking to me. So, well, now that you've officially reduced the number of board seats, thank you. Um, we do have two terms. Uh, we have one term that is expi expiring, and then we have another uh, seat that is vacant on the board. And so we would like... Uh, We'd like to have a full board now, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, who would like to make the motion? 
Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, appoint uh, Pam Shermeyer to the uh, DDA board for the term that expires on February 1st of 25 and Mark Watts uh, also to the, the DDA board for the term that expires on February 1st of 2023. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing Does none. Go ahead, sorry. Just a cleanup of the language. That's that's all I would say. Cleanup of what language? Uh, I think uh, the the date doesn't reflect what Bruce just said on the on paper, right? Yeah. Right, but the the, the official is the motion that was made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got gotcha. you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Nope. Okay, roll call, please. Roll call, Council Member Siddiqui. Yes. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. And Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have the motion to appoint members to the Board of Review. Anybody would like to introduce this or are we just. Mayor and Council, uh, the Board of Review um, meets in regards to the, um, I guess, appeals relative to property tax assessments. And you have three vacancy, three seats to fill. One is um, an individual asking for a reappointment, Leonard Alford III. Uh, two new applicants, Regina Jones and Rhonda Wilson. Um, you have terms that are expiring in 2022, 23, and 24. I'll uh, make a motion uh, for the following appointments to the uh, Lather uh, Village Board of Review. Uh, Leonard Alford III for the term expiring December 31st, 2024. Uh, Regina Jones uh, for the uh, term uh, ending or expiring uh, 12 31 2023 and Rhonda Wilson for the term expiring uh, 12 31 2022. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion or question? Hearing none, roll call, please. Roll call. Council Member Ferguson? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. And council member city. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And next we have a resolution for Black History Month. And I will hand that on over to Dr. Cheryl to. Um... <laughs> Thank you. A mayor and council each year you uh, um, adopt a resolution to recognize the month of February as Black History Month. So this is your resolution for the year 2021. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have to really do a uh, motion nor a roll call. So um, I think that is now there, be it resolved that Mayor Garrett and members of the Lathrop Village City Council encourages all residents to observe the entire month of February as Black History Month. Next, we'll have uh, reports from boards, commissions, and committees. First up, looks like it is the DDA. Do we still have Susie? Still here, sorry, I was clicking too fast. Um, well, I think I've uh, <laughs> got a lot of updates from me. <laughs> um, we're, we're chugging along. Um, the year has started off pretty good for us. We um, we have found out through Oakland County that um, we have approximately $30,000 that the city is eligible for through their uh, restaurant weatherization program. So the Economic Vitality Committee is uh, beginning, beginning discussions on how best that we can award um, those funds to our eligible restaurants. Um, things that we are considering include um, $5,000 grants, reimbursements for PPE, um, other, we can order them other supplies such as the igloos, um, the heaters, et cetera. So we're gonna be 
figuring out how best to, like I said, distribute those funds um, in the coming weeks, really, our application is due on February 4th. Um, there are still a couple of grant opportunities out there, the At Your Side grant through the county, um, and the, oh, there's another grant that just closed on Friday through the state. So we've been actively promoting those, um, those opportunities to our businesses. Corey's been doing a really good job um, putting out the a quarterly DDA e-newsletter in addition to the city's uh, weekly e-newsletter. We will be hosting a Fireside Fridays in February. So every Friday in February from 11 to one, um, Corey and I will be out in the pavilion with at least one cozy warm fire and um, we encourage you and any businesses and residents that wanna come to the pavilion. It's BYOB as in blanket and bring your own lunch. And we're, we're just excited to do something a little bit different. And uh, our plan is to continue this uh, into at least March. So, um, and last but not least, we are also finalizing some details for financial planning February, which will be a couple of webinar, different webinars um, hosted by our businesses um, to help residents and other fellow business owners um, with some of their financial planning needs. So I think that sums it up right now. You should have like a um, great attendance uh, award um, each year. A great attendance award. Okay, so you're buying for that one, right? If it's one person. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, you know, I, th I, I, I see no reason why we shouldn't. So, especially since we've been doing such a great job with it. Um, that does remind me, we, we are um, completing the third, um, the third in a series of recovery planning workshops, um, which have been facilitated through uh, the National Main Street Center um, through Matt Wagner and um, I personally think they've been going swimmingly well. Um, and I'm really excited to see what our last session on Wednesday, what we come up with. Um, I think it's really gonna put us in a good position to um, effectively help our businesses recovering through COVID and um, moving forward. So excited for that. Thank you. Do we have anything from the Planning Commission? Uh, Jill, you want to introduce the Planning Commission annual report? As long as we got you. I didn't even see that at the end of your agenda packet. <laughs> um, yes, so every year, um, as required by the State Planning Enabling Act, the Planning Commission prepares an annual report that's a brief summary of their events and activities of the previous year. So you'll see in there is a, a note about the number of um, development reviews that have been uh, conducted by the Planning Commission. Um, public hearings, we didn't have any associated with development review, but we did have two associated with zoning amendments and um, continuing to work on some of those amendments right now, as well as the comprehensive plan that should be um, ready for you to take a look at probably um, at your March meeting. We'll be bringing that um, and asking for you to release it to the reviewing agency so we can move on um, after the review period, we'll have a public hearing on that with the Planning Commission and then adopt that. So probably early to mid spring, mid spring, I guess that is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, because I was looking at the end of the document scrolling through, I see that um, I skipped over our city administrator's report and our city attorney's report. I'm apologizing. City administrator. Okay. Oops. So I want to remind you that your um, February 1 study session will be a Zoom meeting. And on February 8th at 6 p.m., there's the joint meeting with the Planning Commission in regards to the Caregivers Ordinance. 
Um, we already talked about um, some of the staff changes and um, we're trying to go through the 500 applications we received for the administrative assistance for customer service position. I uh, want to remind um, the audience and council that uh, we are closed daily from 1230 to 130 p.m. And if you'd wonder why the holiday lights had remained on, we were a part of the presidential inaugural committee's COVID memorial and um, memorial memorializing of American lives lost to the pandemic, um, which was held on Tuesday the 19th. So the lights should be coming down this um, week. And you have a meeting scheduled with Oakland County Water Resources Commissioner Jim Nash. Um, he wanted to meet with us on February 12th at 9 a.m. A Zoom link was emailed to you. He'll be discussing um, the new initiatives, including the updates to the Evergreen Farmington system and the conversion of the, our sewer disposal system to a sanitary drain, um, which is part of mm -hmm. the corrective action plan for both um, the Evergreen Farmington as well as us. Uh, we already talked about the RFP for the House in the Woods. Um, the police department, we're pleased to let you know that Officer Mike Tackett is now our sergeant, our second sergeant. The contracts for the police and command officers are agreed upon, so we're just trying to get the signatures now. And um, some things that Susie did not mention in regards to the DDA, um, we're looking at a business that is planning to open a COVID-19 testing clinic, which will be a drive-through just south of City Hall. Uh, I think we're just waiting on them to get their certificate of occupancy approved. Um, I thought I saw that already open. They were trying to, I don't know. Last I talked to the building official was Friday and they didn't have it as of then. Yeah, there's, there's, I've seen a lot of signs up, but I haven't seen any activity over there other than the signs. Right, we had to have some conversation with them in terms of what our sign ordinance is for, <laughs> and we're cones, so, but we'll, we'll, we'll continue to work with them. Um, and I'm very pleased to let you know that the brick wall that had collapsed has been completed um, just behind those two commercial properties on Southfield Road. The um, program for the citywide food drive to benefit Lighthouse of Oakland County, County was tremendously successful. And we just want to thank all of our residents who generously donated and thank the mayor and Chris for um, initiating and um, making that happen and supporting that effort. The spring classes are open for registration um, and they are a mix of virtual and in person. And two street projects I just want to mention, um, we applied for the funding for the 11 mile service drive, the next section of the reconstruction for the fiscal year 2024. We may not have enough points um, to get awarded. If not, we'll apply the next year or they may have to redistribute funds, depends on how that goes. And just today we had a, um, a Zoom conversation with the road commission in regards to Southfield Road between 11 and 12 now, as you know, they've been trying to do that total reconfiguration. Um, there's no federal funding aligned with that yet. And best guess looks like 14 years or more out. So what's being suggested is um, to move forward with the paving program. And the one that we are considering is estimated to cost about 5 million. The road commission and the city slash DDA would be required to um, do a 10% match of about 500,000 each. Um, this would do the base repair and about three to four inches of asphalt. They're also looking to improve the drainage and the ditches along Southfield Road by, by installing some um, storm water and eliminating most of the ditches. Um, the road would remain at the five lanes and the funding would be available and the project completed in 2024. That um, re restructure would last about 15 years. That completes my report. Cheryl, the um, the you said the wall is complete. Does that include is that the, the structure or does that include the painting? Because uh, the last time I walked by there, I remember still seeing it. It was only painted like about less than half of the the way. Are they waiting until the spring to do that? I didn't know it was painted. I think they used two different kinds of bricks, and I don't think anything specified what kind of bricks, um, or that they had to be consistent in color. Because it's like there's like a <laughs> diagonal like right in the middle of the wall is that called but there's a wall yeah there is a wall 
that has a cap on it. So that's all yeah. I can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we would assume you'd use the same or like bricks, right? Um, I guess we didn't specify. We didn't say, wait a minute, don't start doing checkerboard bricks. I have no words. <laughs> it's unreal. We have a wall. Let's not start talking about walls. <laughs> we don't have to because it's done. <laughs> okay, got you. Unfortunate, but um, we live and we learn. Uh, next, city attorney. Just real quick, um, as many of you may already know, the city was served with three separate lawsuits from the JMC properties. Um, so those have been turned over to our insurance carrier who they've assigned counsel to handle those because they are seeking monetary damages from the city. So I anticipate we'll probably have a, um, a meeting or a closed session meeting to discuss that case once um, he drafts his litigation plan, which should be um, next couple of weeks. So, so just give me that update. Thank you. And I already did the boards and commission. Do we have any unfinished or new business? No. Um, public comments. Speakers are limited to two minutes. No. No Council. public comments. I'm sorry. No public comments. Thank you. <laughs> Council comments. No. Oh, the only thing I just, 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 just to ruin the silence, just want to remind everybody to, uh, if you haven't already, uh, do your, your self, uh, identification, uh, for your waterline material. Uh, it's very important because we need to know what kind of material you have. Cause if you had letter galvanized steel, the city is required to replace your waterline. Um, it'll also say if you do the self identification, it'll also save the city money because in those cases where we do identify lead and galvanized, we don't have to spend $750 to dig up your front lawn to determine, uh, uh, the line from the outside. So, um, the directions are on the city website. Uh, it takes literally takes about three minutes, if even that to, to do, um, and you will uh, be saving the city money. And we also don't have to bring somebody into your house during COVID time. So there's another advantage there uh, because we're required by law to identify uh, the, the material in, in, inside the house. So um, please do that. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, uh, and uh, that'd be great. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Just one question for the, sorry, the, uh, Martin Luther King celebration video. Um, I did not get a chance to see that where we had to kind of make a statement. Um, where can I find that now? On YouTube. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think, oh, I think it was on. You mean the MLK task force one? Uh, yes. The one, the one that Salim and I, and I think Bruce and yeah, that one, the task force. I think it's a task force one. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's on YouTube. It is on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is. Okay. Uh, do you know the title or I just search uh, Lather Village? I can send it to you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Anything else? Oh, I have one last thing. Just <sighs> a reminder. I know. I, I remember your eyes. Mine is very quick because I noticed this as I looked out the window. I haven't been out the house in two days, but it has snowed. And we have to remember that uh, you are responsible for uh, shoveling your snow um, because, and it's your responsibility, the resident's responsibility to shovel your snow. So just a nice reminder. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yep. So have a good, oh, I'm sorry. I have to take a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Well, thank you all. I'm glad I stopped myself because I surely have the arrow on the leave button as we speak. Have a good night. And then I think we'll see each other is that next week. Yep. February 8th. That's right. Have a good night. All right. Yep. See you, everybody. Thank you. Stay good to see everyone. Who are you asking?
for a vet. Oh, okay. See you guys. Bye. All right. See you. Thanks, Take care. Bye.